second. Elko, Nevada here. You know, this Saturday night here we're going to the Mass of the Ascension. Ascension Thursday. And this is within the octave of the Ascension. Let's see. Let's see. Let me see another. Yeah, that. I can use that. Epistle for the, the Mass of the Ascension, taken with the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. The former treaties I made, O Theophilus, of all things which Jesus began to do and to teach, until the day on which, given commandments by the Holy Ghost to the Apostles whom he had chosen, he was taken up to whom, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many proofs. For forty days, appearing to them, and speaking of the kingdom of God, and, eat, and eating together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but should wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard, saith he, by my mouth. For John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They therefore who are come together asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? But he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the moments which the Father hath put unto his own power. You shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, and in all, all Judea and Samaria, and even to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had said these things, while they looked on, he was raised up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they were beholding him going up to heaven, behold, two men stood by them in white garments, who also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come to you as you have seen him going into heaven. And then the Gospel. Take that according to St. Mark, Mark chapter 16. At that time Jesus appeared to the eleven, as they were at table, and he upbraided them for their incredulity and the hardness of heart, because he did not believe them who had seen him after he was risen again. And he said to them, Go ye into the whole world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. And the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God. But they going forth preached everywhere, the Lord working with all, and confirming the words with the signs that followed. Thus were the words of today's Holy Gospel. Father and Father, the Holy Ghost, Amen. Two considerations on this doctrine and reality of the ascension of our Lord. Just remember that we are creatures of body and soul, and the Lord Jesus Christ has a real human body. And his body was six feet tall exactly. We know from the shroud, the Lord Jesus Christ is six feet tall. And that uh, his body is the same as any human body of any man. And that <coughs> that body, in his perfection, physically was killed at, on, on Holy uh, Good Friday. And lay dead inside of the tomb on Holy Saturday. And then rose from the dead on Easter Sunday and then on Ascension Thursday that same six foot body of our Lord Jesus Christ was on the mountain in which he would ascend up into heaven and that body ascended up into heaven and it's interesting when we look at the dogma of the Ascension modern theologians modern theologians try to describe it differently they say that heaven isn't really physically up but in fact heaven is physically up our Lord Jesus Christ has a physical body and one of, the, one of the realities of all things that exist, not only human beings which have bodies, and animals that have bodies, but even angels and spiritual things 
Everything that is real must have a place. There is nothing that is real that doesn't have a place, a location where it is. And that is, is, we ask, for instance, where is the devil? The devil is an angel. He is a real angel. He does not have a body. But he is a real angel, he is a spirit, and he is in a place. And where is the place where the angel is located? The devil is located in the center of the earth, 4,000 miles beneath our feet right now, in the very center of the earth, is the physical location of Lucifer. He's physically located in the center of the earth. And all the questions, anything that's real must have a place. And as the fathers of the church and the doctors of the church say, where is hell? Hell is located in the center of the earth. The word hell means the place underneath. Everything real must have a place. And one of the ways in which our Catholic faith has been ripped away from us, and the truth of our faith has been ripped away from us, is that in a very subtle way, men have been taught in the last 500 years that place is not does not belong to spiritual things. A spiritual thing can be anywhere. No, a spiritual thing must be inside a real place. If we are in the state of sanctifying grace, there is a physical indwelling of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost inside of me right now. He is there inside of me. And that he is not inside of one who is in the state of mortal sin. He is only there in the state of mortal sin and one by holding him in existence. He has the power. But God is everywhere in that he holds all things in existence. But he is not everywhere in his trinity. He is not everywhere in his, in his, in his life. His divine life is not in, 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 inside of Lucifer. His divine life is not inside of hell. And there is nothing of hell inside of heaven. And these are both places. Just like hell is a physical place located in the very center of the earth. And this place is very small. And it is, it is, it is surrounded by the entire universe. So likewise, heaven must be a place. There is a physical place where heaven is. In every case, when a saint dies, like in the case of St. Benedict, for instance, when his sister Scholastica died, what happened? <clears throat> he saw her. Ascend as a dove into heaven. He saw her ascend. And so that their, their souls ascend up to where God is, or they descend down to where the devil is. But there's a physical location. And many, many souls speak about the reality, well, our Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. Where is his body? Well, it's somewhere. It's just around. We know that our Lord's body is physically in a real space, in a real place. So that when we have the Blessed Sacrament, what happens? The body and blood and soul and divinity enters into a real place so that when the, when the consecration takes place in the Mass today, or tonight, when it takes place, our Lord Jesus Christ will physically be present in this place. He will be physically present right here in this location in Rendon, Nevada. He's going to be right here in a real physical place. And so likewise, His body is a real body. It's in a physical place. Well, in some hearing the description, God's even hearing the description, interesting of of uh, Bishop Sheen, and he said that well, when we see the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, his body went up into the clouds, but that doesn't mean it went straight up physically and all the way up and up and up and up. It just went up like your mind lifts up and looks up to the sky or looks up to higher things and looking down to lower things, looking up to higher things, some kind of a spiritual up and a spiritual down. And this is wrong. There is not a spiritual up, there is not a spiritual down. There is only a physical up and a physical down. That's why the word we say, when one dies and goes to heaven, there are multiple heavens. When one goes to heaven, heaven is the sky. Heaven is above. Heaven is in the air. Heaven is a physical place. The word heaven and sky are interchangeable. So that we always say, whenever a man dies... And he is in the state of grace. He goes up to heaven. He physically goes up. And when their soul dies in the state of mortal sin, it goes down into the kingdom of hell. And so that the one goes down and the other goes up. But there is a physical up and it's a physical down. The real body of Jesus Christ is located right now in the Empyrean heaven. At the very ends of the universe. In a physical place. And he is on the right hand of God. Whenever we see every time in sacred scripture, 
when, and, and the fathers of the church, and the doctors, they always ask the question, where is the soul? Where is it? Even happiness. When we're studying St. Thomas Aquinas, it says we are happy when we are in heaven and see God face to face. Where does happiness reside? Where is happiness? If happiness is inside of me, it's either in my toenails or in my fingernails, or it's in my brain, or it's in my hair, or it's in my heart, or it's in my passions. It has to be in a physical place. And St. Thomas says, happiness is truly located in the mind. That's the place where happiness is. So that when Jesus Christ enters inside of us, he enters inside of the mind. He is in the mind right now in the state of sanctifying grace. He's physically there. He's in the mind in a deeper way and really inside the mind, seeing God face to face in those that are in heaven. He is also in the mind in those souls that are in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the place called limbo, those that don't see God face to face, but they're in the place of limbo. He's physically inside of the mind. They do see God. They are in a state of happiness, but they don't have the actual, what we call the beatific vision, the perfect vision of God on the inside. They see God on the outside, and they see it, they are in a place of happiness, but he's located in the mind. He's in the mind. He's not just, he's not just in us. He can't just be in us. He is in his physical place. Jesus Christ in heaven is located in our minds. And St. Thomas asked the question, where is he? Is he first in our mind or is he first in our heart? It matters where he is. And how it affects us is very different. If, if he's in our heart, one happiness is one kind of thing. If he's in our mind, happiness is another kind of thing. And it turns out the dogma of our faith, Jesus Christ, happiness is inside the mind. And it overflows to the mind and the rest of the body. And on this day of the ascension, or this time of these nine days, in this brief period of the, of, the, of the ascension, this very brief period in the church called the time of the ascension, between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost Sunday, we consider the Lord Jesus Christ's body, his physical body, lifted off the ground, physically, not spiritually, and it went up into heaven. What does it say when those two angels came down and they looked at the, the, the apostles, then why are you looking up to heaven? Their head is aiming up and they're looking into the sky, which is called heaven. Heaven equals that which is above. There is a lower heaven, which is between here and the atmosphere. And then there is a higher heaven. And then there is a higher heaven above that. There are multiple heavens. Hell is the hell of the hell of the damned is one small place in the center of the earth by which all the damned are there. And the angels, the angels that are in hell, whom we call devils, they are physically located in that place. And if souls also, when a soul dies, when a man dies, the body and soul are separated. The soul is physical. The soul is real. The soul is separated from the body. And the soul still exists. The soul is still around. Where does the soul go? It has to go to a place. So that in heaven, every single saint is soul in heaven. They are souls in heaven. And every damned are souls in hell. And all of those in limbo are souls in limbo. They're physically there right now. And then at the end of the world, all that's going to happen is that the bodies are going to join the souls wherever the souls are. The soul is what makes us human, what makes us different from the animals. And the location of the soul determines the location of the body more than the other way around. So that for a while on this earth, the soul was follow the body around. So if you, if you live a long time, like Methuselah did, 956 years, for 956 years he had to follow his body around. But for all eternity, his body will follow his soul around. So for a brief period, the soul follows the body. For all eternity, the body follows the soul. So that at the end of the world, when that, when that reality happens, at the very end of the world, when there is a, a general resurrection, all bodies that have decayed in the earth, all bodies, the real physical body of every individual soul, including the little babies that died in the womb, and all the way up to the Methuselah died at the age of 956, and everyone that died in between, the good as well as the bad, and all the ones in between, all the souls, all the bodies shall be risen from the dead, and they're going to go where the soul is. Now the body, we know, especially needs a physical place. The body has to know where to go. And the body will be called like a magnet to wherever the soul is. 
For when you consider that day of judgment, all the souls will be pulled to the valley of Josephat. And billions of bodies, right now there's 7 billion people on earth. So there'll probably be 20 billion, 24 billion bodies will be risen from the dead. And these 24 billion bodies are going to be sucked like a magnet to where their souls are. And they're not going to go to the wrong souls. All will be in the valley of Josephat. All of them. The souls in hell, the souls in limbo, and the souls in heaven. And the bodies will go exactly where those souls are. And Jesus Christ's body will come down from the Empyrean heaven, as will the Blessed Virgin Mary's body. She is his body and soul in the Empyrean heaven. He is in body and soul in the Empyrean heaven. And possibly St. Joseph, and, and maybe a few others. And they are going to come down and be at the Valley of Josephat. The bodies of the twelve apostles shall be reunited to their souls. And they're going to be physically extended in the Valley of Josephat which is an actual valley that is located in Israel. It's a physical place. And in that physical place is where the general judgment must happen. There can't just be a judgment, even our particular judgment. What's the question of the fathers of the church and the, and, and the saints? When a soul dies, when a man dies, his soul separates from the body. Where does the judgment take place? It has to take place in a courthouse. There has to be a physical place. You gotta go to 14th Street in Maine on the second floor. There's a little, there's a little bitty room. It's got little wooden chairs in it. It's got a little, a little, a little desk at the top, a little hammer, and the, the judge comes out and judges in that place, in courtroom number 17. There's got to be a physical place of judgment. And when the soul is judged by our Lord Jesus Christ when it dies, it's at a physical place. And the church teaches us the physical place of the particular judgment is the place where we die. In that physical place where we die, the soul separates from the body. And in that physical place, Jesus Christ comes down. And the good angel and bad angel show up. And there is a judgment at that place. At the end of the world, there will be a general judgment at a physical place, which is going to be the Valley of Josephat. And in between, the body rots and decays in a physical place. As, and also the souls in, in, in heaven and in hell and in, in purgatory and in limbo are in a physical place. And these, these place, this place is where these souls reside. Where, where for instance, is the place of, of the Garden of Paradise. The Garden of Paradise was saved from the flood. The Garden of Paradise still exists. And in that garden right now are Enoch and Elias. Enoch is the same size as us. And he physically walks around inside of that garden of paradise, as does Elias. We do not know its exact location. The general consensus is that it's somewhere in the Himalaya Mountains, somewhere in Asia. We don't know exactly where. But we do know it's in a physical, precise location. It can be measured right down to the centimeter, right down to the uh, hundredth of an inch. So that it can be right down to its exact physical location. We just don't know exactly where that physical location is. We know that it's somewhere on this earth, on the surface of the earth. We know that it is in somewhere in, in, in Asia. We know that, but the exact location we do not know. The Ark of the Covenant is going to be discovered before the end of the world. We don't know exactly where it is, but it's somewhere in, in, in the Middle East, and it's in a physical location. And we must remember that heaven is physical, hell is physical, limbo is also physical, and at the end of the world, what's going to happen? Those souls of limbo... And the souls in heaven are going to be walking physically on this earth. It will be transformed and become the new heaven and the new earth. And we'll be walking on this physical place. The souls of limbo and the souls of heaven. And the souls of hell shall be, the bodies of hell shall be crushed in the center of the earth. They're going to be physically crushed, body upon body, in the center of the earth. Remember that our, when we teach our Holy Roman Catholic faith, it is real, it is physical. It's not spiritual pie in the sky. It is real and physical. And our Lord Jesus Christ really and truly, physically, bodily, rose from the dead, bodily died, <coughs> bodily was in the tomb, bodily rose from the dead, and bodily ascended into heaven, as did the Blessed Virgin Mary become assumed into heaven 15 years later. And they're physically there. And that when the Blessed Virgin Mary comes down to appear to souls from time to time, she must come down to appear. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ comes down to appear. He comes down to appear. When at the consecration of the Mass, Jesus Christ becomes body and blood and soul and divinity present in the host, He comes down from heaven to appear. And every time we speak about God and His coming down to the earth, and then down to the center of the earth is where hell is, up is where heaven is. These are physical things. And let's remember that our faith is real, our faith is physical, the ascension is real, the ascension is physical, and our bodies shall all rise from the dead. And, and they are going to be sucked like a magnet to wherever the, wherever the soul is. And the soul ultimately determines where the body will be for all eternity. And then the and the and that it's going to be in a physical place. The souls in heaven and limbo will be walking upon this earth with our Lord Jesus Christ. And the souls of hell shall be crushed in the center of the earth with Satan and be smashed together with the damned for all eternity and cut off from the rest of us. And so in any case, remember that our faith is real and physical. Don't forget that. And that there's, there's not a spiritual body in heaven. There's not a spiritual body in hell. And, and that the physical body is in heavens, the physical bodies would be in hell, and that uh, the, our truth, our, our faith is for body as well as soul, and for all things. In closing, I bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.